what's up there, DSO first. So today, as a follow-up to my review on Harbor Freight's uh, high-volume, low-pressure spray gun, uh, I'm going to show you how you can spray paint your plastic bumper cover. And here's the main area where we're going to be doing our repair. As you can see, we get some uh, very deep scratches and scrapes on this corner. And also some other nicks and scratches all around this bumper. Just, uh, you know, it's just normal considering the age of this car, which is a 2001 Audi A6. But I'll just show you the procedure on repairing something like this as you can just basically apply the same steps to all the other scratches around the bumper. Also the damage to your bumper cover is a little bit more extensive than this or in other words maybe you have a little bit of a dent on your bumper cover. What you can use is one of these which is a heat gun and then you use this to heat the edges of the dent on, the, on your bumper cover and then if you can get access to behind the bumper cover maybe you can use a wooden handle of a hammer or something to push out that dent as you're heating around the edges. And also make sure if you use this, don't just heat one side, just stay in one, one little area. You need to move around, otherwise you'll uh, cause further damage to the bumper cover. Uh, and then just try to get it as smooth as possible. And then depending on how smooth you're able to get it, you're either going to need to use some glazing putty or uh, filler to completely smooth it out and get it ready for primer and then paint. Now if you do need to use some filler, then this is where it gets kind of tricky. You need to I guess uh, have to pull off your bumper cover to find out what kind of uh, plastic your bumper cover is made of or I guess you can always just call your uh, dealership and ask them but uh, if you do pull off your bumper cover then you want to look up for a stamp which on this uh, plastic bumper cover from a Chrysler PT Cruiser looks something like this and that's your uh, the code for your bumper cover as you can see the code for this bumper cover is TEO and that's the type of uh, plastic that was used to make this bumper cover. And then once you find that out, you, then you can take that to the, your local uh, auto body and shop supply store and then they'll be able to give you the correct body filler for your plastic bumper cover. Also, if you're going to have to apply some filler to your uh, plastic bumper cover, then it's a very good idea to look into buying some uh, adhesion promoters uh, as well and apply that before you apply your filler to your plastic bumper cover. Alright, now let's get on with our repair. So what I'm going to be doing here is, uh, since these scratches aren't super deep, uh, what I'm going to do is just start off with some 220 grit sandpaper and go over all of, all of these scratches and scuff marks and try to uh, smooth them out as, pos as much as possible. If they don't smooth out with 220 then I'll go one down but I think 220 should do the trick. Also something to keep in mind is to whenever you're sanding around these edges uh, you don't want to sand directly over the edge because you'll dig into the edge real quickly and then, uh, you know, once you're done spraying, it's not going to look good. What you want to do is just to sand the, the top part separately from the bottom part. Alright, let's clean it off, see what we got. Alright, so here's a closer look at our, after our first pass. Uh, not too bad, actually, you know. We were able to get a lot of the, the scratches out. And we still have a deep uh, gouge. I guess not deep, but it's gone through the... The paint and the plastic is actually showing here. We got some chip paint down here, some more chipping here. Uh, over here is gone through the paint as well, but the plastic is still in decent shape. Uh, but what we want to do is just to make sure that we thoroughly sand these areas that the paint is chipping. You want to thoroughly sand those areas down. You don't want to apply a glazing putty, filler, or anything over paint that's chipping. So we're going to sand these two area is a little bit more, probably here too, just to be on the safe side. Also some could argue that this would be a good time to use some more coarse sandpaper to get these areas that the paint is chipping all smoothed out, but uh, I don't have any uh, more coarse sandpaper in my arsenal right now, so I'm going to have to make this 220 work, but if you do have let's say a 180 or a 120 grit sandpaper, then you can use that in these areas and then uh, go over it with 220 as well. All right, things look much better now. Smooth to the touch, no chipping. And here, this is smoother too. And here as well, it's pretty smooth. Next, it's time to apply our glazing putty. And what I'm going to be using is a product called Bumper Bite, made by Sim. And the product number for this is 404A2. And this is a flexible glazing putty made for plastic bumper covers. And on the back, it gives about seven or eight different uh, codes for all the different types of plastic bumper covers it's compatible with. So I'm sure it's going to be sufficient for our. Uh, application here and this was for about 25 bucks at the auto body shop supply store. But another good uh, flexible glazing putty I can recommend to you is called uh, Polyflex which is a polyester glazing putty 
Yeah, but that one is about 40, 45 bucks, uh, which is, you know, 20 bucks more than this. So if you're on a budget or if it's going to be, you know, you're going to use this once in a while, then you can probably just get away with uh, using this. All right, but before I show you how you can uh, mix and apply glazing putty, I'm just going to go around and sand in all the different areas that I still have scratches and uh, scrape marks on. So that way after I uh, mix it up, I can apply it to all the different uh, spots that need it. Here's something else this heat gun is good for, taking off these old stickers. Nice and easy. So I just got done sanding down all the different areas I had scratches and scuff marks on, but uh, here's another step that I almost forgot, which is to clean up our uh, repair area with some uh, grease and wax remover. And for this, you can either use some uh, microfiber cotton towels or just these little blue, blue shop rags that I got laying around. So we're going to be mixing our glazing putty on this piece of glass and you either want to mix it on a piece of glass like this or if you want to you can buy a mixing board from the body shop supply store and whatever you do you don't want to mix it on a piece of cardboard because the chemicals and solvents that are in the cardboard are going to bleed into the glazing putty or uh, body filler and that's not going to be good. Alright and the good rule of thumb for these is uh, you want to mix the golf ball size of this uh, the putty with one inch of this hardener but I'm gonna go a little light on the hardener since I need more time to work with this and especially since I'm doing the camera work to move things around and get good shots and whatnot but uh, the, the good rule of thumb is a uh, golf ball size of this to one inch of this. Alright now we just uh, thoroughly mix this. Alright I think that's properly mixed. Alrighty, and when applying this, you want to go in firm, smooth motions and you want to get it to be as smooth as possible so that you kind of uh, cut down on your sanding time. Now, we don't have a whole lot of areas that we need to apply this, so we're kind of lucky in that aspect, but nonetheless, you want to make sure you apply it as firmly as you can and as smoothly as you can. Don't be afraid to use your fingers to get these out. This will save you some time when it comes to sanding. Alright, I'm just going to go ahead and apply it to those other couple of spots and then we're going to wait about 30 minutes for it to dry and then we're going to sand it down. Alright, so it's been actually about 45 minutes and this is thoroughly dry now. So now we're just going to sand it down again with 220 grit sandpaper. And also I don't know if I mentioned earlier but I'm using a soft sanding block. You really don't want to use a hard sanding block, especially on a curved uh, part of this uh, bumper because then you could dig into the bumper and then you won't have an even finish. Alright, here's how things look after uh, sanding. Uh, we got a bit of a high spot here. Uh, it's not that bad. I can barely, you know, feel the difference between this little spot and the or surrounding areas. But uh, I'm not, you know, the correct way would be to sand this high spot down or even tap it down, press it down and then put glazing putty over it and smooth it out, but I don't really want to sand down to the bare plastic. I think I can just get away with putting more glazing putty over it and then smoothing it out. Um, on this part here, we got good coverage. We're pretty smooth here. This area, I actually sanded through most of the glazing putty, except this area. But, you know, on this part, we weren't missing any chunk of our uh, plastic bumper cover, it was just the paint was chipping, so if it's smooth to the touch, for the most part it should be good, but I'm still going to put another skim of glazing putty on here as well, and uh, all the other areas are pretty good, they feel pretty smooth to the touch, I don't feel any scratches or bumps on this part of the plastic bumper cover, so I think just another skim of glazing putty should do the trick. Now I forgot to turn on the camera, but just put a, just put a thin layer of uh, this glazing putty on, this two couple, on these couple of spots. Alright, and here's how things look after the second round of applying glazing putty and then sanding. And, yep, things look pretty good now. Pretty smooth all over. Again, can't feel anything with our uh, fingers. No deep scratches, no pinholes. And now we're ready to apply some uh, primer. So what we're going to do next is to just tape around the repair area and cover it. And that way we don't have primer spraying all over the place and then we can cut down our sanding and keep, keep our uh, repair area small. And what I'm going to be using for uh, covering the surrounding area is these little shop, uh, blue shop towels. And what I like to do is just to tape, uh, uh, tape some uh, painter's tape to the edge of these and then put them on like this. 
and then flip him up and tape him. This way, it's not gonna be in straight edge, and as a result, uh, when you spray, it's not gonna be one straight line that's, uh, that's uh, one straight line of primer that's built up that you'll have to sand down thoroughly once you take this off. And I'm gonna be using this white primer that's made for flexible substrates for this purpose. And again, it's important to be using the right type of glazing putty and primer uh, that are made for flexible plastic bumper covers like this that like to flex and uh, bend all the time. Because if you don't, then over time, once you're done spraying your uh, base coat, clear coat, then after it dries up and maybe a week or two or a couple months even, you might start to see cracks or flaking on your finish, which is just gonna ruin uh, all the hard work you've done. And next we're gonna start spraying and you wanna spray with 50% overlap and you wanna start, you know, you wanna start pressing on this as you're moving. You don't wanna, you know, be here, press, then move. You wanna, as you're moving, you wanna press. That way you don't leave a blob of <laughs> primer on one side and less primer on the other side. And there's our first coat and now we're just gonna wait for that to dry and it should dry for in about you know five to ten minutes and then we're gonna apply a second and a third coat all right it's been ten minutes time for our second coat and our third coat right, so it's been about 30 or 40 minutes and this is completely dry now so now I'm just gonna peel these uh, shop towels off all right, here's a closer look. Now, you guys are probably not gonna be able to see it, but it's pretty smooth for the most part. There's a couple of spots right here and this little area where the little bit of the plastic bumper cover was showing that are still not smooth. I should have sanded this part a little bit more, I guess. And there's one, one other area right here. But uh, I think in the next round of sanding and then uh, applying primer again, we should be able to get this completely smooth. All right, so next we're gonna bump up our uh, sandpaper to 320 grit sandpaper. Now, if you apply primer and then you check it out and see you still have deep scratches and grooves and whatnot that the primer couldn't take care of, then uh, you know, go ahead and apply some more grit glazing putty. Uh, and then uh, you can sand that down with 220 and then go to uh, you know, primer again and then go to 320. It's just gonna be an extra step, but it's gonna be necessary if you still have deep scratches and grooves and scrapes that are still visible. So in other words, you didn't do a per better, good job the first time you applied glazing putty and sanded this down. But in our case, we only have very minor imperfections here, so we should be able to take care of them with this 320 grit sandpaper. Another important uh, issue, thing is that you need to make sure that you go over all of your scratches you made with your 220 grit, you wanna go over them with your 320 grit. Because, uh, you know, we applied primer where we didn't cover exactly all the scratches. And if you don't go over them with your 320 grit, and once you, uh, next step is going to be to sand things down with 400 grit and 400 grit may not take care of the 220 grit scratches that we got on our panel. And uh, the whole point of this is to get this to 400 grit so you can put base coat because base coat will only cover 400 grit sandpaper. So if there are scratches either made with your 220 grit or your 320 grit sandpaper and you don't, and you miss them, you either don't apply a primer to those spots or don't smooth them out with uh, 400 grit sandpaper, then your, uh, those scratches are gonna show after you apply your base coat. Also, you wanna be careful and also keep track of how far you go with your 320 grit, because again, you gotta make sure you go over it with your 400 grit in the next step. All right, and here's uh, how things look after uh, sanding down with 320 grit. Uh, things are pretty smooth, they look good. Uh, in this area, some of our glazing putty is, uh, you know, showing through. So we're gonna put another two thin coats of uh, primer in the, these couple of spots right here, this area, and this area here. I was able to uh, sand these down pretty smooth with 320 grit, so they should be fine. But uh, yeah, you don't want any glazing putty showing through your primer because uh, then it will also bleed through your base coat, and then it won't look good. So you want to definitely make sure. You don't put any base coat over glazing putty or body filler. You want to cover that up with uh, primer and then put base coat on top of that. All right, and you can tape up the surrounding if you want to, but I'm just gonna, you know, be able, I think I'll be able to control where the uh, primer is spraying. And just gonna do this little two spots here.
Top number two. All right, now we sand with uh, 400 grit sandpaper. And uh, again, you want to keep in mind you go over all your 320 grit uh, scratches and take them out. Also, you want to preferably try to have as the least amount of uh, primer on here as you can, or the, I guess the thinnest uh, amount of pri primer. Uh, basically, you just want to try to leave the primer in the areas that's covering the glazing putty and its uh, surrounding areas. And these rest of the areas, you either want to you know, take them out or make sure it's uh, really, really thin. Something else you can do to, in order to make sure you've, uh, you're going over all your 320 scratches with 400 grit is that you can spray some uh, a guide coat with, that's a different color than our primer. And then when you sand over that, then you can keep track of uh, which areas you sanded down or not. But if you're good at it, you can just uh, start at the edges and keep track of which edges you've covered and then work your way across. That way you're sure you're going over all your uh, 320 grit uh, sand scratches. And here's a look at a repair you after we've done sanding with 400 grit sandpaper and everything is smooth. There's no uh, scratches or uh, scrapes that I can see or feel. And now that we're done with our repair area, we're going to sand down the rest of this panel with 1500 grit sandpaper so that when we apply our clear coat to this entire panel, our clear coat has something to stick on. The whole idea is to apply base coat to the repair area and just uh, little by little blend that into the rest of the panel and then apply a clear coat over that and the entire panel. Also something else you might want to consider is that since this uh, repair area is close to our uh, rear quarter panel, it would be okay to blend the blend our base coat into the quarter panel. It would require to us to sand down our quarter panel with 1500 grit sandpaper. I'm not going to go into that. I'm not going to blend this into this, pan to this quarter panel because I've, I've sprayed this uh, paint color before and it's a pretty good match. Plus, uh, you know, plastic uh, fenders, they look a little different when you spray it. Uh, it's going to be a shade different than the, the quarter panel since it's, you know, obviously different material. So I think we'll be okay. But if you do want to know how you can uh, blend your base coat into the adjacent panel or in general just uh, more info about how to uh, paint your car, then I suggest you watch a video series I made about how to paint your car. It's very detailed and I'll put a link to it in the new uh, interactive video cards YouTube's been putting up uh, which you can access by just clicking on the little uh, lowercase i icon on the screen. And we're going to be wet sanding the rest of this panel with 1500 grit sandpaper and you want to make sure you cover all the areas that don't have 400 grit sand scratches on it. And try if you can not to get uh, water over these primer areas. If you do then I would suggest waiting uh, maybe 10 hours to a full day before you start your uh, base coat so the primer can dry thoroughly. And you want to get a rag and as you go along dry things off and take a look and there's areas that are still shiny you want to sand them down so that way you're uh, sure every, all the whole entire panel is uh, scuffed up. Something else that's very important is to make sure you scratch up these edges in, uh, underneath uh, your tail light. You preferably just take off your tail light uh, if it's easy. Uh, but if not, like in our case, just make sure you get the sandpaper in there and scuff these edges up because if you don't, your uh, clear coat is going to start peeling in these edges. Also a very good idea is to start taping up the edges of the adjacent panel so that you don't scratch that up when you go to scuff up the edges of this panel. And after we're done uh, sanding down our panel with 1500 grit sandpaper, now we're just going to finish uh, taping it up, then we're going to clean it, and then we're going to start spraying our uh, base coat, and then I'll clear coat. And I'll uh, include those steps in detail in the second part of this video series. I'll put a link to it when it's up uh, in the new interactive video links YouTube has, which you can access by clicking on the little lowercase i icon that should be somewhere on your screen. And I'll also include some other related videos that you might find interesting. So. If you like this first part of this series, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more like it and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.